This is a reading from Getting to Know Michigan, um, a coloring book about Michigan facts and history. Today's focus will be about the state bird, the robin redbreast. The robin redbreast became the official state bird on May 21st, 1931, when the legislature, by resolution, made the selection as the result of an election conducted by the Michigan <clears throat> excuse me, Audubon Society. Nearly 200,000 votes were cast, of which Robin Redbreast received many more votes than any other bird as the most popular bird in Michigan. The resolution added that the Robin Redbreast is the best known and best loved of all the birds in the state of Michigan. So this is a picture um, from the coloring book that I will be sending out to, to my students, those of you watching from my class. Um, basically, this, this short text says that a group of, group of people um, basically made a law that our state bird, uh, after voting, was the most popular uh, bird in the state of Michigan, and it was elected our state bird. So usually there are, there are uh, tiny blue eggs and the chest and stomach, the breast area, is red on the robin uh, with darker feathers. The other topic today that I wanted to read about was the state fish, which was the brook trout. And um, I did read a few weeks ago over and under the pond, uh, oh my goodness, maybe a few months ago now in the classroom, um, about some brook trout. And we talked about uh, a food chain that the trout may be involved in um, under the water of a lake. So this text says, the trout lives in many of Michigan's lakes, rivers, and streams. Sports persons love it for its gameness, good flavor, rich flesh, and pretty colors. Most trout live year round in fresh water. Michigan lawmakers chose the trout as the official state fish in 1965 but it was not clear which of the four species found in Michigan, the brook trout, the brown trout, the rainbow trout, and the lake trout was the state fish. A law passed in 1988 made the brook trout the official state fish. So a little fun fact, there's actually four different kinds of trout in Michigan. And out of all four, this is the best to hunt. Um, that's what that means for gameness. Um, hunters like to say it's kind of like a game, right? Uh, to go hunting. Good flavor, rich flesh, and pretty colors. So if you remember us reading about this, and uh, if you ever do any research about a trout, the scales on them really uh, glisten magnificently with a lot of different colors. So if you are tuning into this video for your science assignment about food chains and food webs, I am going to review what a food web and food chain is. So here is a diagram of a food web. A food web shows the transfer of energy within an ecosystem. Energy is transferred between organisms when one organism eats another. So this food web starts way down here um, by these little uh, microscopic organisms uh, that <clears throat> give nutrition to mushrooms. They also give nutrition to small fish and crayfish or crawfish. Then from this uh, first level here, you have the crayfish uh, giving energy to the raccoon. The raccoon would eat uh, the crayfish, or this small fish. The small fish is showing an arrow to the raccoon. I'm going to jump back over here to the mushrooms because the mushrooms end up to the raccoon as well, just through another path. So, so the mushrooms would be giving nutrients uh, to the plants surrounding it, these weeds, these grasses. These grasses are giving nutrients to this grasshopper. This grasshopper would be eaten by a raccoon or a mouse. So these arrows are showing the energy going right into the belly of the mouse. So now we're back here um, 
by the raccoon, the raccoon eating the mouse, but also a hawk would s snatch up a mouse pretty quickly. Um, and also this raccoon would eat the mouse, but the hawk may also eat a raccoon, uh, maybe a live, smaller raccoon, or possibly even a dead raccoon if it's desperate. Um, the arrow always points to where the energy goes. Just my other thought here to remember. Example, the raccoon has four arrows pointing to it in the food web diagram above. The raccoon eats grasshoppers, mice, small fish, and crayfish. So all four, um, excuse me, all three of those organisms, no, four, sorry, the grasshopper goes to the raccoon. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, but all four of those animals um, or organisms would be eaten by the raccoon, giving it um, a broad array of nutrients. The energy goes from the smaller organism to the larger organism, and an organism is a living thing, from microscopic to the large apex predator. Even your producers are organisms. They are living. Another example of a food web that really shows um, the scientific terms, so just like in the other uh, food web, we are starting down with our primary producers, these plants. This is the first level, the autotrophs. The next level is your grasshoppers and your squirrels. So your squirrel and your grasshoppers would eat the plants. That is the second, the primary consumers, herbivores, herb, the main uh, part of the word, plants, herbivores, they only eat plants, herbs. Next, you move up to the primary carnivores. Uh, in this case, it is a scorpion. It is the secondary consumers um, that would be eating the herbivores, scorpion. And finally, our secondary carnivores, the apex predators uh, within this food web, the tertiary consumers, the fourth level, is a kit fox and a golden eagle. So again, in this case, these are the largest organisms with, within this food web. Um, again, if you're reading this for your assignments, the assignment is having you then think about the state bird and the state fish, the robin, redbreast, and the brook trout, and think about how they could fit into a food chain. So please review this uh, example that I put in your weekly assignments as well. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.